I get a lot of comments about how I use my small custom keyboard layout with Vim. It's actually a pretty simple way that I do this. All I basically do is remap the HJ K and L keys to a new position and then avoid sort of knock on effects in relocating those. And that's basically it. I then just learn the new position for the shortcuts. And I think it was sort of easier for me because I started learning Vim around about the same time I started experimenting with different keyboard layouts. So I never got those shortcuts too ingrained in my muscle memory. But I think it kind of depends how you think in terms of shortcuts as well, whether you're doing it based on the position of the keys or whether you're kind of imagining the letter name in your head when you fire those shortcuts. I think it kind of that depends how long maybe you've been using them for. Sometimes you'll end up just using shortcuts positionally rather than being conscious of the letter name. But for me, I'm always trying to stay conscious of the letter name and that has made this much easier switching to a non-QWERTY layout on a tiny keyboard. I actually started using Vim in the first place because I thought it would be a great way of setting up a sort of a device agnostic development environment that I could use on my iPad or my Mac or even a phone in an emergency. You know, I can connect to a server and I've got the environment that I'm fully used to coding on right there that I can use remotely. And it works fantastically well on the iPad as well. I'll do another video on how I've set that up, but it's a great way of doing this. So because I'm you know, now familiar enough to do all of my actual coding in Vim, it doesn't matter whether I'm connecting to a remote server or a local server and on whatever device, as long as I've got my keyboard and a screen with a terminal in there, I'm, I'm good to go. And it works really well. So let's jump in and have a look at my VimRC config here and I'll show you how I've set it up. And obviously there's a lot of extra fun stuff in here and I'll probably do another video looking at that. In this one, I'm gonna concentrate mainly on how I've actually dealt with my small non-QWERTY layout in terms of using Vim. So obviously the main positional shortcuts in Vim are those H, J, K and L keys on your home row. Now for me, I don't even have the inner column. So I'm actually gonna use a different shape for that positional navigation key setup. I'm using the inverted T on my right hand here. Uh, it's just these home sort of keys and then up with my middle finger. So it's up, down and left and right there, right on my right hand. Now I actually use those as arrow keys in my sort of system layer on this keyboard. So I'm very familiar with using those for positional movement. So basically I want to remap H, J, K and L to those new keys. So basically all we do is actually just find where I've got this here. So you can see I've actually just taken the H, J, K and L keys and remapped them to N, E, U and A on the keyboard there. Now, obviously what that means is we've taken away the N, E, U and A keys, which were already used for other things in Vim. So we need to put those back onto, essentially onto H, J, K and L. You could move them somewhere else, but then you risk having a knock-on effect of changing those shortcuts. So by putting them back to H, J, K and L, we're kind of closing the loop at that point. Now, obviously it means that if you were used to using the positions of those keys, you're potentially having to just go somewhere else completely for those keys. Now, the only one that actually sort of resulted in a knock-on change for me was the the N key. So N normally is skip forwards in your search and capital N is skip backwards in your search. So it's quite logical having that forwards and backwards with the caps version of that key. So when I remapped that to K, I did actually want the capital version of K to be remapped to search backwards as well. So that's, that's sort of reusing that format on the remapped key. And then we've remapped E, which is jump to the end of the word back to the J key. And that's quite nice in my head because I say jump in my head. So J for jump jumps to the end of the word. That's an easy way of remembering that. It's nice to look for those kinds of patterns when you're coming out with Vim shortcuts. I think that's how a lot of them were designed in the first place. Now U obviously is undo. So for that, what I've done is used to actually just added a control shortcut. So I've actually just set up control Z for undo. Obviously this is slightly uh, less convenient than the original U key. But with control R being used and uh, by default for redo, it's reasonably consistent with that approach. And interestingly, even for me with Z being on my second alpha layer, it still works fine. I can just roll through that and, and undo. And then I can use my repeat key if I need to go back multiple steps. So the last key that needed remapping from HJKNL was A which is obviously insert the character after the current position. So I switched that to L, which is obviously using the last one of the H, J, K, and L empty slots that we resulted in as a result of moving them. So that kind of closes the loop there. And that's basically the bulk of the work that I've done to get Vim working with my small custom non-QWERTY layout. And having a repeat key on a custom keyboard layout is an amazing thing to use with Vim. Definitely something I recommend setting up. So my inner thumb key here is the repeat key. And the beauty of it is it actually repeats fully modified key combos. So control Z, you can hit the repeat key and it fires control Z again. And of course, for sort of things like going up and down in Vim, you can, you can do that with the repeat key as well. So up half a page and then just bash, bash, bash on the repeat key, down half a page. It's a good way of just rattling about inside the Vim document. And of course you can do the same with your line by lines as well. It's also good to have the mouse mapping going on here. So you can actually scroll inside Vim 
And that means you can swipe inside Vim on an iPad as well, and that works really nicely. You can actually tap to place the cursor as well on the iPad. Obviously, you can do that with a mouse as well, but on the iPad, it kind of it actually works quite well because you're so used to sort of touching the screen and interacting with it like that. It's sometimes a bit easier just to tap the screen than use the Vim commands to relocate the cursor. I only really use that when I haven't actually got my keyboard. If I'm just doing something on the iPad without my physical keyboard and I'm using the on-screen keyboard, I'll do another video on that because I've actually emulated this layout on the on-screen keyboard, which makes using Vim without a physical keyboard keyboard possible. Obviously not quite as fast, but if I'm using that, then I will touch the screen to place the cursor rather than using the on-screen keyboard to move the cursor around. But there's a couple of other areas inside Vim that use the HJKNL positional keys, and one of those is the window focus. So if you have a split, horizontal or vertical split, you can change focus by using the win command with the HJKNL keys. And I've actually just put that on the leader key. So basically, if I make a split like this, I use the leader key, which is my space key, and I can just use my positional arrow style keys to go between them like that, and that works really well. So leader K will give me a horizontal split, leader W gives me a vertical split, and then leader Q will close those out. And obviously just using the leader and then the positional keys will move around the focus of those splits. And there's one more area which you wanna set up with the positional keys. And that's when you're in the file explorer here, I'm using the arrow keys now, but the, the default here uses HJKNL to, to navigate around in here. So you wanna remap that and that just uses a special bit of code here for the, the remapping of those. So I've just put that back. So when I'm in the file explorer mode, I can use those same positional keys to move around in there as well. So essentially there's kind of three core things that I've got going on here on the keyboard that make this work really well. The first is the repeat key, which inside Vim just, just makes things super easy, especially if the repeat key is, is firing a modified key as well. And then the second is having a decent home row mod setup. And I'm gonna do another video on that because a lot of people, and myself included, when they first try and set up home row mods, the settings are so confusing and so complicated and you know by default, it doesn't really work and it's a bit of a nightmare. ZMK I think makes it a lot easier than QMK to understand what's going on there. So I'm very happy to have that home row mod style set up with my mods, even though they're actually on my top row. For me, a top row is just one above my home. So it's still very little overhead for me. And I've got my layer switching on the home row using the same approach. And then the third is setting up my space key as a leader key in Vim. And I'm used to using the space key for hotkeys on the Mac to switch applications. So it's very logical for me to think of the space key as a kind of shortcut key. And of course, the leader key approach inside Vim, which is where you tap the key and then followed by the letter shortcut. So you haven't got to hold them down at the same time. And that gives you the shortcut. And very very easy to map your own functions to that because that's what it's for. You know, it's, it's a sort of exposed fast way of setting up another layer of shortcuts that doesn't conflict with all the existing ones. So you can remap all kinds of shortcuts into that leader key version and really tune Vim to your own use using that leader key. So those three things all work together really nicely on this small custom keyboard layout and make it a real joy to use Vim. I've got some other fun plugins and things in this Vim config as well. The color scheme obviously is really nice using the Groovebox theme. I'll link to this config file in the description so you can grab it and have a look at that as well and I'm sure as time goes on I'll do more videos looking at the different parts of this Vim config as well. This is the first video on this channel but I've got a main channel that looks at other custom keyboard stuff among other all kinds of broader topics as well but if you watch this video next you can see how I built the unibody version of this split keyboard. It's exactly the same layout but in a unibody version that works perfectly well with the iPad. Here are some comments from that video to let you know it'll be worth your while so make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in that video on my main channel.